The International 3D Society, in association with the Visual Effects Society, assembled a panel of experts in the field of 2D to 3D conversion on the lot at Sony Pictures Imageworks. The panel addressed questions on the technical aspects, challenges, and techniques used in the 2D to 3D conversion process. You figure out when you're putting objects in that 2D environment, you calculate the Z depth for the scene. You figure out what it is based on visual cues and if you were there when it's being shot, you might have even taken measurements of it so you know where things fall within the scene. You know, we've just been getting direct visual evidence that it's not trading something perfect for something less than perfect when you go from stereo capture to conversion. Generally, we have all met with filmmakers and decided on a depth script or a methodology and an approach to the entire film. From there, uh, we've charted it out on a shot-by-shot -shot basis at which point we go into what I would say for a general term is isolating areas within the image using various techniques um, to specify layers of depth and volume. We then use a virtual camera, create two new eyes. Once we've done that, there's basically missing information from the plate that has been created by juxtaposing the cameras. Then we use a various techniques um, to fill in the missing information and by which you are left with a stereo pair of images that can be screened. The thing that differentiates us is uh, how we create the volume. Um, there's various techniques. One is, uh, of course, uh, depth maps. Um, the other is, uh, is actually uh, projecting um, uh, the image onto a, a primitive or basically a CG representation of the room. Some of the things that you'll consistently see with conversion is uh, you know, the way the faces will wrap or how far the nose or the mouth feels or how sunken in the eyes are. Um, by using a, a known geometry or, or a digital double that was fairly close to our actual actors, it gave us a very realistic uh, roundness to the way our characters were. You can take uh, material that was shot on three different days and cut into a montage and get the depth to match perfectly. It breaks down to three broad processes where you're defining the layers or a roto map work, you are creating the depth, and you are doing paint work. You get a little bit of rotational discrepancy, or you get a little bit of vertical discrepancy, or you get warping where one part of the one part of the frame on one eye is bent one way and another part is bent the other, and it can all be cleaned up. And that's one thing that makes conversion attractive is that you actually have more control because you are doing it in a post environment and you can react to anything that the director decides to change. It's not all going to be shot in 3D. The rigs aren't good enough. There's going to be conversion. There's going to be movies that are done both ways depending on the shot. And uh, I'm counting on Looking forward to seeing everybody's, everybody here and seeing their work uh, as it continues to improve. For more information on the 3D Society and to participate in future events, visit international3dsociety.com.